We are live. Yay. I'm actually able to get a live stream in this week. Oh, my goodness. Uh, no wonder. Sorry for Monday <laughs> and Wednesday. Uh, it, it just, it's like I told, uh, I think it was Charles or Lizzie, one of the two, that life happens and tends to get in the way sometimes. So, But at least we got today. Uh, and let's make the most of it. It's a brand chapter, so I'm assuming there's going to be some good stuff in it. Uh, yeah, yeah, they usually do. Although, to be honest, it's been so long since I took these notes, I don't remember what happened. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. It's the, uh, this is the, uh, the causeway. This is, uh, the no hodoring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you'll be as just as surprised as I am then if you can't remember what you wrote. Uh, barely remember anyway. Yeah, I'm assuming there's going to be some trip at Targaryen stuff in there. Oh, maybe I don't remember. <laughs> no. Well, I I think if we look Five back, together. yeah, I think you, I think you averaged three a live stream. So we'll see what today holds. Uh, shall we get to it? Yeah, man. Oh wait, I'm old new dude. Look, first time this week, so I'm <laughs> old new dude. He is Richard York, Asher's trueborn son. And you got your dragons on. I got my dragons on. This chapter is third of its name in the in the Book of Storm. <laughs> um, we didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't include that. <laughs> well, as I was telling I readjusted, uh, Wednesday. I, I got up, I was sick of my stomach. It just wasn't my day. And I don't know how to cancel a live stream, but I do know how to edit one. So I edited it for today and I had brand marked in my book, but I didn't know which brand it was. So uh, yep. that's, 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 that's the story. Well, I mean, technically, it's just called brand. It's just we, because it's third of its name, we traditionally uh, refer to it yeah, as yeah, yeah, yeah. third. But did somebody get a haircut? That would be oh, you. No, I didn't. I didn't get a haircut recently. I'm, my hair's getting my hair's getting long. I need a haircut. Yeah. Mine's longer than yours. Um. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe the hat makes it look like you had a haircut. Uh, maybe it shadows. I don't know. <clears throat> it's kind of overcast here today, so I got no no light coming in from the window. Uh, so that tends to cast a shadow. All right. So maybe it looks like I got a haircut. I don't know. I can't tell. Well, let's do it. Storm 40 right. brand, third of its name. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let me live that down, are you? <laughs> brand, what did you do? <laughs> the tower stood upon an island. Its twin reflected on the still blue waters. When the wind blew, ripples moved across the surface of the lake chasing one another like boys at play. Oak trees grew thick along the lake shore, a dense stand of them with a litter of fallen acorns in the ground beneath. Beyond them was the village, or what remained of it. Hey, uh, I always, in my head canon, um, if none of the crap in this book happened and Ned convinced the Night's Watch to let him repopulate uh, the, the Queen's Gift, um, and named John a lord up there. I always figured he would be at the 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 Queen's Tower, wherever the the this this uh where they're at now is where I always picture John being. Well, I mean, we don't know if there's anything else. It, um, we don't we don't really know of much else there. So so that's that, right. that's what that's what we know. So that's where we would picture him. Yeah, yeah. And the the twin reflected on the still blue waters kind of reminds me of um, one of the one of the the uh, narciss narciss narcissus narcissus that's it right one of the narcissus legends is that is that he falls in love with his twin sister and one of them is that he falls in love with with his reflection right and so twin reflected on the waters mm -hmm. um, kind of kind of reminds me a little bit of narciss nar narcissus whatever i just whatever i just said i said it right one of those times <laughs> yeah. did you say it enough times differently i guarantee you at least probably get it once Anyway, it was the first village they'd seen since leaving the foothills. Mary had scouted ahead to make certain there was no one lurking amongst the ruins. Sliding in and amongst oaks and apple trees with her net and spear in hand, she startled three red deer and sent them bounding away through the brush. Summer saw the flash of motion and was after them at once. Brain watched the direwolf lope off and for a moment wanted nothing so much as to slip his skin and run with him. But Mira was waving for them to come ahead. Reluctantly, he turned away from Summer and urged Hodor on into the village. Jojen walked with them. 
it was his own reflection. Well, it's both. There's actually um, there's versions of it where he falls in love with his reflection in the in the water, and there's also versions where he he falls in love with his twin sister. So, like Jamie and Cersei. Yeah, Jamie is supposed to be kind of like that. He's supposed to be, be specifically seeing the things about himself that he admires and the ones that 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 he ad admires. So he likes Loras because Loras reminds him of him. He likes mm -hmm. Brienne because Brienne reminds him of, of him and his better days, right? What, what he could be yeah. and so forth. Right? Are, are you calling my sweet Jamie narcissist? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, not 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 textbook. His sister is textbook. Oh, He's yeah. He's more like the myth. So, okay. so in the, in, there's a version of the myth where he falls in love with his twin sister, and there's a version where he falls in love with this reflection in the water. <clears throat> and so he's, he's trying to be, he, he is like the myth, the, the concept of seeing yourself and falling in love with, <clears throat> but, but with him, he's falling in love with the aspects of himself that he sees in others or his potential that he sees in others. Right. Whereas Cersei is more of the textbook definition where she's all about herself. Right. Right. Cersei is the narcissist, not Jamie. He he is doing what the, the myth does, which is not okay. the same <clears throat> as being a narcissist. Narcissist okay. is more focused on themselves. Jamie's more focused on what he can see in others that resembles himself. Okay. All right. I'll let it pass then. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a, it's a subtle difference, but it's definitely a difference. <clears throat> <clears throat> the ground from here to the wall was grasslands, brand new, fallow fields and low rolling hills, high meadows and lowland bogs. It would be much easier going than the mountains behind, but so much open space made Mira uneasy. I feel naked, she confessed. There's no place to hide. Who holds this land? Jojen asked Bran. The Night's Watch, he answered. This is the gift, the new gift, and north of that, Brandon's gift. Mace Luna had taught him the history. Brandon the Builder gave all the land south of the wall to the Black Brothers to a distance of 25 leagues for their, for their sustenance and support. He was proud that he still remembered that part. Some maesters say it was some other Brandon, not the Builder, but it's still Brandon's <coughs> gift. Thousands of years later, good Queen Alicene visited the wall on her dragon Silverwing, and she thought the Night's Watch was so brave that she had the old king double the size of their lands to 50 leagues. So that was the new gift. He waved a hand. Here, all this. Yeah, easy to give away something that's somebody else's, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Imagine the North loved that. Uh, by the time Jamie sees his own reflection in the water, he's been humbled a bit. Watch his golden hair float away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thank you. No one had lived in the village for long years, Bran could see. All the houses were falling down, even the inn. There had never been much of an inn to look at it, but now all that remained was a stone chimney and two cracked walls set amongst a dozen apple trees. One was growing up through the common room where a layer of wet brown leaves and rotting apples carpeted the floor. The air was thick with the smell of them, a cloying, cidery scent that was almost overwhelming. Mira stabbed a few apples with her frog spear, trying to find some still good enough to eat, but they were all too brown and wormy. It was a peaceful spot, still and tranquil and lovely to behold, but Brand thought there was something sad about an empty inn, and Hodor seemed to feel it too. Hodor, he said in a confused sort of way. Hodor, Hodor. This is good land. Jochen picked up a handful of dirt, rubbing it between his fingers. A village, an inn, a stout holdfast in the lake, all these apple trees. Where are the people, Bran? Why would they leave such a place? They were afraid of the wildlings, said Bran. Wildlings come over the wall or through the mountains to raid and steal and carry off women. If they catch you, they make you your skull into a cup of, to drink blood, old Nan used to say. And there are YouTubers who claim old Nan's word is gospel. I am not one of them. She says something similar to this in the second paragraph of Game One, Brand One, the first chapter after the prologue in the series. The Night's Watch isn't so strong as it was in Brandon's day or Queen Alicent's, so more get through. The places nearest the wall got raided so much the small folk moved south of the mountains or onto the Umberlands east of the King's Road. The Great John's people get raided too, but not so much as the people who used to live in the gift. Judge and Reed turned his head slowly, listening to music only he could hear. I mean, that's that's interesting, isn't it? God speak. Huh. We need, oh, yeah, it's like, you're right. It's like he's listening to the, oh, uh, that's really interesting. Anyway, we, yeah. need to we need to shelter here. There's a storm coming, a bad one. Bran looked up at the sky. It had been a beautiful, crisp, clear autumn day, sunny and almost warm. But there were dark clouds off to the west now. That was true. And the wind seemed to be picking up. There's no roof on the inn and only the two walls, he pointed out. We should go out to the holdfast. 
Hodor, said Hodor. Maybe he agreed. <coughs> we have no boat, Bran. Mira poked through the leaves idly with her frog spear. There's a causeway, a stone causeway hidden under the water. We could walk out. They could, anyway. He would have to ride on Hodor's back, but at least he'd stay dry that way. The reeds exchanged a look. How do you know that? asked Jojum. Have you been here before, my prince? No, old Dan told me. The holdfast tells a golden crown, see? He pointed across the lake. You can see patches of flaking gold paint up around the crenellations. Queen Alisane slept there, so they painted the Merlin's gold in her honor. A causeway. Jojen studied the lake. You are certain? Certain, said Bran. Mira found the foot of it easily enough, once she knew to look. A stone pathway three feet wide, leading right out into the lake. She took them out step by careful step, probing ahead with her frog spear. They could see where the path emerged again climbing from the water onto the island and turning into a short flight of stone steps that led to the whole fast door. Hey, everyone, Girl Nettles says. Hey. Hey, Girl, hey, Girl Nettles. Path, steps, and door were in a straight line, which made you think the causeway ran straight, but that wasn't so. Under the lake, it zigged and zagged, going a third of the way around the island before jagging back. The turns were treacherous, and the long path meant that anyone approaching would be exposed to arrow fire from the tower for a long time. The hidden stones were slimy and slippery too. Twice Hodor almost lost his footing and shouted Hodor in alarm before regaining his balance. The second time scared Bran badly. If Hodor fell into the lake with him in his basket, he could well drown, especially if the huge stable boy panicked and forgot that Bran was there, the way he did sometimes. Maybe we should have stayed at the inn under the apple tree, he thought, but by then it was too late. So Bran and Bran both have to navigate hidden perilous zigzag paths. I think there might be one or two more of these besides those two, but but those are the two that come to mind. Yeah, that's the only one. I, I mean, I don't, I, another one doesn't come to mind. I feel like there's, I feel like there's something else that's kind of like that, but I can't think what it would be. Um, thankfully, and and uh, if anybody who hasn't seen uh, Preston's uh, series on Brienne should definitely see that. It's it, it's excellent. <laughs> and, and part of the reason I bring that up is that he specifically talks a little bit in there about how Bri Brienne re sort of represents the, the costs of patriarchy and Bran sort of represents the, the, the benefits of the formation of, of, a, of religion. So anyway, thankfully there was no, and, and their names are even meant to, to sound similar and so forth. He talks, he talks about that in there too. Thankfully okay. there was no third time and the water never got up past Hodor's waist, though the reeds were in up to their chests. Hey Sanji, hiya. Hey, hey Sanji. A reminder again that Mira is very short, as if she had a mother of the Cranig men, rather unlike a tall and fair Dornish woman. <laughs> <laughs> and before long, they were on oh, the yeah, island. Yeah, check it out. Read what Mother says. Sansa coming down the mountains, uh, the path zigzags. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I knew there were probably some more. <laughs> and before long, they were on the island, climbing the steps to the holdfast. The door was still stout, though its heavy oak planks had warped over the years, and it could no longer be closed completely. That will be mentioned again. That is kind of important. Mira shoved it open all the way, the rusted iron hinges screaming. The lintel was low. D Duck down, Hodor, Bran said, and he did, but not enough to keep Bran from hitting his head. That hurt, he complained. Doors hurt when it comes to Bran and Hodor. Yeah. Hodor, said Hodor, straightening. They found themselves in a gloomy strong room, barely large enough to hold the four of them. Steps built into the inner wall of the tower curved away, upward to their left, downward to their right, behind iron grates. Bran looked up and saw another grate just above his head, a murder hole. He was glad there was no one up there now to pour boiling oil down on them. The grates were locked, but the iron bars were red with rust. Hodor grabbed hold of the left-hand door and gave it a pull, grunting with effort. Nothing happened. He tried pushing with no more success. He shook the bars, kicked, shoved against them and rattled them and punched the hinges with a huge hand until the air was filled with flakes of rust, but the iron door would not budge. The one down to the underbolt was no more accommodating. No way in, said Mira, shrugging. The murder hole was just above Bran's head as he sat in his basket on Hodor's back. He reached up and grabbed the bars to give them a try. When he pulled down, the grating came out of the ceiling in a cascade of rust and crumbling st stone. Hodor, Hodor shouted. The heavy iron grate gave Bran, another bang in the head and crashed down near Jojen's feet when he shoved it off of him. Mira laughed. Look at that, my prince, she said. You're stronger than Hodor. Bran blushed. <laughs> With the great gone, that he, 
that Bran on his own, well, he's on Hodor's back to be able to reach, but Bran on his own yeah. gives them access to the whole fast, not not Hodor. Right. With the great gone, Hodor was able to boost Mira and Jojen up through the creeping murder hole. The Cranningmen took Bran by the arms and drew him up after them. Getting Hodor inside was the hard part. He was too heavy for the reeds to lift the way they lifted Bran. Finally, Bran told him to go look for some big rocks. The island had no lack of those, and Hodor was able to pile them high enough to grab the crumbling edges of the hole and climb through. Hodor, he panted happily, grinning, up, grinning at all of them. They found themselves in a maze of small cells, dark and empty, but Mira explored until she found the way back to the steps. The higher they climbed, the better the light. On the third story, the thick outer wall was pierced by arrow slits. The fourth had actual windows, and the fifth and highest was one big round chamber with arched doors on three sides, opening onto small stone balconies. On the fourth side was a privy chamber perched above a sewer chute which dropped straight down into the lake. So Davos uses some similar language climbing the steps to see Stannis, noting the lack of windows on the lower levels. And, and th this starts off by saying a maze of small cells, which kind of reminds you of somebody being, being in a cell, which right. um, it may kind of ties those two together, right? Yeah. George loves to, to um, I wouldn't say duplicate, but he uses imagery over and over again. Um, yeah, sort of allusions to the, especially the yeah. chapters that are nearby. Well, I mean, he definitely likes to do it in threes, uh, just about everything he, he, he likes to do in three. But yeah, it definitely um, takes your mind back to something that he wanted you to pay attention to either earlier or for yeah. shadow something that he wants Which to do. Which makes you wonder if there's some parallel going on in the story that uh, perhaps. Perhaps that could even hint that the, the two stories will have something in common of those two characters or something. Right, right. By the time they reached the roof, the sky was completely overcast and the clouds to the west were black. The wind was blowing so strong it lifted up Bran's cloak and made it flap and snap. Oh, and it, oh. Hodor, Hodor said at the noise. I just, I just realized what the parallel is between, Ho between Bran and, and uh, um, it. it I think he's doing this to make the story more like a song, repeating chords in a way. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Ooh, nice. That's, that's so, a mic drop. I just thought of why he might have been tying tying um, the two together. They're also, um, you know, we we see this happen with Davos over and over again, where he gets he gets kind of thrown into cells, right? But the but the next time he gets thrown into a cell, it's going to be a parallel with Bran. And that he's referred to as a dead man, and that, that you know, Manderly said he couldn't eat until he was dead, and so forth, and until he saw him dead, and all that, right? And of course, yeah. Theon vows to kill Bran, and, and and quote kills Bran, and proves it with his bones, and the sa same thing happens there. So, so that might be what, part of why he's tying the two together. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Um, by the time they reached the roof, the sky was completely overcast, and the clouds to the west were black. The wind was blowing so strong it lifted up Bran's cloak and made it flap and snap. Hodor, Hodor said at the noise. Mira spun in a circle. I feel almost a giant standing high above the world. <clears throat> there are trees in the neck that stand twice as tall as this, her brother reminded her. Aye, but they have other trees around them just as high, said Mira. The world presses, presses close to the neck, and the sky is so much smaller. Here, feel that wind, brother, and look how large the world has grown. It's it was funny that, that we get... The only southern house that we get mention of is Umber, and then you get imagery of a giant here. Um, I don't think the Umbers were as scared of the wildlings as, as Bran thinks. Can you imagine attacking an Umber stronghold with, with Great John and, and, and well, Small John? Well, that's part of the point is that people, people would go there and then they would get attacked less because they were in the Umber land. Right, right. But the, but the, but the they make it seem like that even the Umbers are, are there's some, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I mean, that's an awful brave wilding to attack the Umbers. Uh, I mean, and of course, the, this is the this is the key chapter for Eld Eldrick uh, Stoneskin's last video, right? That the um, where any and part of what he talks about is the Umbers and and how they the, some of the hints that that Bran the Builder actually was was uh, forcing the, the giants to build or are in the in the, the embedded with the umbers and so forth right yeah but it, this is it's key is chapter. the umbers sigil of, of a giant breaking his chains or in so. chains i think it's breaking okay yeah well that would my mind would be 
the 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 Giants breaking free of Brandon to build it, right? Yeah, potentially. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the Wildlands think the Umbers are pussies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. <laughs> uh, no, I'll never get that out of my head now. <laughs> <laughs> it was true. You could see a long ways from up here. To the south, the foothills rose with the mountains gray and green beyond them. The rolling plains of the new gift stretched away to all the other directions as far as the eye could see. <clears throat> I was hoping we could see the wall from here, said Bran, disappointed. That was stupid. We must still be 50 leagues away. So from the priest prologue, an exact quote, some claimed a man could see all the way to the wall from the top. I think you'd need a glass candle, I would think. <laughs> Which yeah, I would think so, the too. point, right? The glass candles might be kept, that they may keep some of the glass candles up at the top of the high tower. Yeah, well, I mean, um, me, uh, I've talked to Lady Thistle about this, and she's talking about, we were talking about why um, uh, Arya has to go back on the three nights of the new moon, which means that, that you can't see it, it's black sky. And something from uh, Independence Day popped in my head and it was a uh, line of sight that you need the satellite to get around the bends of the earth for a signal because signals don't bend, they go straight. So you bounce it off the moon to receive or broadcast information. Um, I, I wonder if the tower, I wonder if, 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 if um, Black candles are the same way. It, it, it's it's the signals don't bend; they bounce off the satellite um, to be able to see where they're at. And at the top of the tower, it is high enough that they can use the the, the black candle to get a a line of sight on what's happening at the wall without having to bounce it off the satellite of the moon. So you're thinking that there's something about them not being able to to spy on Arya, well, or something? Well, no, I mean, I'm just saying that the the magic has to have uh, science behind it. it it's yeah, just but, but your implication is that there's some timing there of why Arya. Um, well, right, yeah, the, the, the she goes back to relay information, and physical relayment of the information is because that the 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 archaeolite acolytes or whatever of the House of Black and White can't well, use their own work. vision abilities to receive information on their own. They're they're on those three nights of the new moon. <clears throat> their uh, scouts, uh, if you will, would have to come back and physically tell them things that are going on in the city um, versus them being able to just see it on their own. OK. Sorry. Yeah, and, 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 and George, as we mentioned in the last Storm chapter, it, it, it may be that George actually has figured out how the moon works, right? Because he, he had he had them basically attacking at dawn, and I think he had mm -hmm. a half moon, and it was high up overhead at dawn. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, in the first two books, he seems to think that the moon rises at sunset and sets it at sunrise, irrespective to the phase, right? Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, Preston was just talking about this. He, he's, he, started, he, he decided to go all the way back and start reading through chapter by chapter, or at least do the right. prologue. And he's um, mostly because he, he keeps it, it, he implied that he keeps rereading uh, Feast and Dance uh, because that's where most of the, the questions are and, 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 and the, uh, you know, theorizing about what would happen next and, and potentially making fan fiction of what would happen next theories and so forth. Right. right. So. Um, he decided that that it had been too long since he'd, he'd read from the beginning. So he went back to the prologue and did a prologue chapter. And he mentioned mm -hmm. that he, he couldn't remember what was wrong with the moon, but he remembered that was, it wasn't right. <laughs> and, and part of what was wrong was George implies that the entire trip back and forth with the scouting of the wildlings, then going back to the group and then going back to the wildlings. He implies that that whole thing is only a, a short, like five hours or something total. Mm -hmm. But he has during their trip back, this, so the second half, essentially, he has the moon start to rise, and then they get there. So still in the second half, or now you know less than less than half of a half, basically, of that right. five five ish hours. He has the moon having been been rising, and now he has it like high up overhead, and it's like it, it shouldn't have moved very much because it because it barely any time had passed. Right, right, right. Yeah. Anyway, so, but, well, he's attempting to have the moon uh secretly tell how how long things take 
Is oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not even secretly, right? He's trying to, to, to let you know when two things are or not happening at the same time by telling you the moon phases are the same or not the same and so forth. Okay. Um, uh, where were we? Hey, James. Oh, hey. Uh, in the shadow of the moon, her, her sorrows bleed up from... Hey, fellas. Yeah. Hello. Um, just speaking of him made him feel tired and cold as well. Jojen, what will we do when we reach the wall? My uncle said how big it was, 700 feet high and so thick at the base that the gates are more like tunnels through the ice. How are we going to get past to find the three-eyed crow? There are abandoned castles along the wall, I've heard, Jojen answered. Fortress is built by the Night's Watch, but now left empty. One of them may give us our way through. The ghost castles, old Nan had called them. Maester Luna once made Bran learn the names of every one of the forts along the wall. That had been hard. There were 19 of them all told though no more than 17 had ever been manned at any one time. There are 19 guardians of hell in the, in the Quran, for whatever that's worth. At the feast of, of King Robert's visit to Winterfell, Bran had recited the names for his uncle Benjamin, east to west and then west to east. Benjamin Stark had laughed and said, you know them better than I do, Bran. Perhaps you should be first ranger. I'll stay here in your place. So I, wonder, I often wonder if Benjamin, as the uncle to the Starks, is meant to declare the Starks bastards and claim Winterfell for himself the stain in Winterfell and Brand's place, right? Because because that would kind of fit the Richard the Third model. Yeah. The moon is physically still there on the new moon. A signal from Earth can still be bounced off of it. Yeah, but not at night. Because um, uh, uh, by definition, a new moon is going to be rising at sunrise and setting at sunset, whereas a full moon is going to be rising at sunset and setting at sunrise because the phases of the moon show, show you when uh, w what the angle is, right? So what the angle of the sun to the, to the moon is. And so that's... Um, hence, hence him having having the moon half moon rise just after sunset doesn't make any sense, right? Because a half moon will either rise at high noon or or at traditional midnight, mm -hmm. um, depending on whether it's waxing or waning. Yeah, well, I mean, on a new moon too, they wouldn't know where to the the point to signal to bounce it off the moon for the uh, the uh, glass, yeah, glass candles and stuff. But if it, if if they're if they're in fact doing these communications at night, mm -hmm. then it, it wouldn't work anyway because the moon's on the wrong side. Yeah. Uh, that was before Bran fell, though. Before he was broken. By the time he'd woken crippled from his sleep, his uncle had gone back to Castle Black. Um, oh, and and speaking of Richard III, see Triplet Turkey's episode one. <laughs> Not every one of them. <laughs> said the gates were sealed with ice and stone whenever a castle had to be abandoned, said Bran. Then we'll have to open them again, said Mira. That made him uneasy. We shouldn't do that. Bad things might come through from the other side. We should just go to Castle Black and tell the Lord Commander to let us pass. Your grace, said Jojen, we must avoid Castle Black just as we avoided the King's Road. There are hundreds of men there. Men of the Night's Watch, said Bran. They say vows to take no part in wars and stuff. I <laughs> like his implication there. I said Jojen, but one man willing to forswear himself would be enough to sell your secret to the Iron Man or the Bastard of Bolton. We cannot be certain that the Watch would agree to let us pass. They might decide to hold us or send us back. But my father was a friend of the Night's Watch, and my uncle is First Ranger. He might know where the Three-Eyed Crow lives, and John's a Castle Black too. We had been hoping to see John again and their uncle too. The last Black Brothers to visit Winterfell said that Benjamin Stark had vanished on a ranging, but surely he would have made his way back by now. Oh, sweet summer child. <laughs> I bet the watch would even give us horses, he went on. Quiet. Jojen shaded his eyes with a hand and gazed off toward the setting sun. Look, there's something. A rider, I think. Do you see him? Bran shaded his eyes as well, and even so, he had to squint. He saw nothing at first till some movement made him turn. At first, he thought it might be summer, but no, a man on a horse. He was too far away to see much else. Hodor? Hodor put a, had put a hand over his eyes as well, only he was looking the wrong way. Odor? He's in no haste, said Mira, but he's making for this village, it seems to me. We had best go inside before we're seen, said Jojen. Summer's near the village, Bran objected. Summer will be fine, Mira promised. It's only one man on a tired horse. Spoiler, Summer will not be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll be fine in this chapter, but, not, but the next chapter is going to take place in this exact same location. A few fat wet drops began to patter against the stone as they retreated to the floor below. 
That was well-timed. The rain began to fall in earnest a short time later. Even though the, through the thick walls, they could hear it lashing against the surface of the lake. They sat on the floor in the round, empty room amidst gathering gloom. The north-facing balcony looked out toward the abandoned village. Mir crept out on her belly to peer across the lake and see what had become of the horseman. He's taken shelter in the ruins of the inn, she told them when she came back. It looks as though he's making a fire in the hearth. I wish we could have a fire, Brent said. I'm cold. There's broken furniture down the stairs. I saw it. You could have Hodor chop it up and get warm. Hodor liked that idea. Hodor, he said, so hopefully. Jojen shook his head. Fire means smoke. Smoke from this tower could be seen a long way off. If there was anyone to see, his sister argued. There's a man in the village. What man? One man would be enough to betray Bran to his enemies, if he's the wrong man. We still have half a duck from yesterday. We should eat and rest. Come morning, the man will go on his way, and we will do the same. Jojen had his way. He always did. Mira divided the, buck, the duck between the four of them. She caught it in her net the day before as, as it tried to rise from the marsh where she'd surprised it. It wasn't as tasty cold as it had been hot and crisp from the spit, but at least they did not want to Bran and Mira shared the breast while Jojen ate the thigh. Hodor devoured, devoured the wing and leg, muttering Hodor and licking the grease off his fingers after every bite. It was Bran's turn to tell a story, so he told them about an, another Bran and Stark, the one called Bran and the Shipwright, who sailed off beyond the Sunset Sea. How come Bran knows about the, what the Shipwright did and we don't? I want to know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Dusk was settling by the time Duck and Tail were done, and the rain still fell. Bran wondered how far summer had roamed and whether he had caught one of the deer. Gray gloom filled the tower and slowly changed to darkness. Hodor grew restless and walked a while, striding round and round the walls and stopping to peer into the privy on every circuit as if he'd forgotten what was in there. Jojen stood by the north balcony, hidden by the shadows, looking out at the night and the rain. Somewhere to the north, a lightning bolt crackled across the sky, brightening the inside of the tower for an instant. Hodor jumped and made a frightened noise. Bran counted to eight, waiting for the thunder. When it came, Hodor shouted, Hodor! I hope Summer isn't scared too, Bran thought. The dogs in Winterfell's kennels had always been spooked by thunderstorms, just like Hodor. I should go see the calm. The lightning flashed again, and this time the thunder came at six. Hodor! Hodor yelled again. Hodor! Hodor! He snatched up his sword as if to fight the storm. Jojen said, Be quiet, Hodor. Bran, tell him not to shout. Can you get the sword away from Amira? I can try. Hodor, hush, Bran said Bran. Be quiet now. No more stupid Hodoring. Sit down. Hodor? He gave along to Namira meekly enough, but his face was a mask of confusion. Jojen turned back to the darkness, and they all heard him suck in his breath. What is it? Mira asked. Men in the village. The man we saw before? Other men. Armed. I saw an axe and spears as well. Jojen had never sounded so much like the boy he was. I saw them when the lightning flashed, moving under the trees. How many? Many and more. Too many to count. Mounted? No. Hodor. Hodor sounded frightened. Hodor. Hodor. Grandpa <laughs> was scared himself, though he didn't want to say so in front of Mira. What if they come out here? They won't, she sat down beside him. Why should they? For shelter. Jojen's voice was grim. Unless the storm lets up. Mira, could you go down and bar the door? I couldn't even close it. The wood's too warped. They won't get past those iron gates, though. They might. They could break the lock or the hinges or climb up through the murder hole as we did. Lightning slashed the sky and Hodor whimpered. Then a clap of thunder rolled across the lake. Hodor, he roared, clapping his hands over his ears and stumbling in a circle through the darkness. Hodor, Hodor, Hodor. No, Bran shouted back. No Hodoring. It did no good. Hodor, moaned Hodor. Mira tried to catch him and calm him, but he was too strong. He flung her side with no more than a shrug. Hodor! The stable boy screamed as lightning filled the sky again. And even Jojen was shouting now, shouting at Bran and Mira to shut him up. Be quiet, Bran said in a shrill, scared voice, reaching up uselessly for Hodor's leg as he crashed past. Reaching, reaching. Hodor staggered and closed his mouth. He shook his head slowly from side to side, sank back to the floor, and sat cross legged. When a thunder boomed, he scarcely seemed to hear it. The four of them sat in the dark tower, scarce daring to breathe. Bran? What did you do? Mira whispered. Nothing, Brad shook his head. I don't know, but he did. I reached for him the way I reached for Summer. He had been Hodor for half a heartbeat. It scared him. Something is happening across the lake, said Jojen. I thought I saw a man pointing at the tower. I won't be afraid. He was the Prince of Winterfell, Eddard Stark's son, 
almost a man grown in a ward too, not some tiny, some little baby boy like Rick Hong. Summer would not be afraid. Our characters are often wrong. Summer is cringing under the lightning and thunder as we will see shortly. John and Brianna almost united. Good thing Summer saved John's butt. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, without a doubt. Most like they're just some umbers, he said. Or they could be knots or norries or flints come down from the mountains. Or even brothers from the Night's Watch. Were they wearing black cloaks, Jojen? By night, all cloaks are black, your grace. And the flash came and went too fast for me to tell what they were wearing. Mira was wary. If they were black brothers, they'd be mounted, wouldn't they? Brandon thought of something else. It doesn't matter, he said confidently. They couldn't get out to us even if they wanted. Not unless they had a boat or knew about the causeway. The causeway! Mira mussed Brand's hair and kissed him on the forehead. Our sweet prince. He's right, Jojen. They won't know about the causeway. Even if they did, they could never find the way across at night in the rain. The night will end, though. If they stay till morning, Jojen left the rest unsaid. After a few, few moments, he said, they're feeding the fire the first man started. This makes me think of the Andals and the First Men and the Burning of the Ashram. See, Triple Threat Grains, episode one. That's two. <laughs> Lightning crashed through the sky, and light filled the tower and etched them all in the shadow. Hodor rocked back and forth, humming. Bran could feel Summer's fear in that bright instant. He closed two eyes and opened a third, and his boy's skin slipped off him like a cloak as he left the tower behind. He found himself out in the rain, his belly full of deer, cringing in the brush as the sky broke and boomed above him. So as I mentioned, I think Bran was wrong about Summer. And the summer is afraid. Yeah. The smell of rotten apples and wet leaves almost drowned the scent of man, but it was there. He heard the clink and slither of hard skin. Saw men moving under the, the trees. A man with a stick blundered by, a skin pulled up over his head to make him blind and deaf. The wolf went right around him, behind a dripping thorn bush and beneath the bare branches of an apple tree. He could hear them talking, and there beneath the scents of rain and leaves and horse came the sharp red stench of fear. Up next, we stay right here with Storm 41, John 5. There you Someone go. says, hit the like button to funnel the algorithm gods. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dirty. Yeah. <laughs> we don't care about the algor algorithm around here. Oh. <clears throat> the tower, the lake, the lightning. I want to be there so damn bad, says Lady Thistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As as small of a place as this is, it's still one of the one of the places in the story that I'd like to visit. Uh, anyway, good to good to have you back. Yeah, well, hopefully next. It's, this is not the year for live streams. So this is the way it is. And then Robin's uh, change of jobs, so that that takes away a lot of. Of of some of the but a lot of my free time so uh, twelve o'clock should be fine but anything else is just out of the out of the picture I don't know about because now she has to to work on weekends so I don't know what that's going to do for me but we'll make do Hope you're yeah I, I appreciate it uh, yeah I was I was telling him before I think before we started or right as we started it's just been a, a, a rough week life got in the way not feeling good. Uh, haven't been sleeping good at all. Uh, it's just, it's just, like I said, life got in the way. Yep, happens. Yeah, probably a good thing. This is a short chapter too. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, I do like it. This chapter and it and it and its brother chapter, the next one, or right. they, they make for they make for a really good. Uh, oh, appreciate it, James. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Uh, without a doubt. Um, but yeah, they make a. Oh, appreciate it, Nettles. Yeah, it's just one of them things. Uh, but the, the, these two chapters could almost just be combined into one big chapter. And and having it up to the reader to figure out exactly where the the POV shifts uh, with the, the, the second chapter being merged with the first. So oh, I appreciate it, Fonzie. Yeah. <clears throat> we started out with three and got up to eight, so it's pretty good. And I'm no longer using the tablet to uh, mess with a number. Normally, if I had my tablet checking the 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 feed, we would be up to yeah, nine. But I'm not watching it today either. Yeah. Oh wow, and that's another two. We'd have got up to ten. Well, <laughs> <laughs> double digits. Ooh. Sometimes, dude. I usually don't. <laughs> uh, but that's cool. 
All right. I ain't got a whole lot for today. Like I said, it's been one of them weeks. I appreciate everybody joining. I really, I really did find that 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 uh, statement by by um, Benjamin interesting, right? That he, that he should take Brand's place. Yeah, that, yeah. I think I, that's a little I've jab. Often, I've often wondered if, if he couldn't show up and say, show up to and offer to take Stannis's pardon and and uh, uh, me with five devices open. <laughs> <laughs> I had a debate about an hour and a half. Dude was supposed to be the judge, but you never responded to my DMs. Too late. The show is going on without you. I understand how life is crazy. I appreciate it, Nils. This one says she's only kidding. No, she's not kidding. She's got five devices open. She's no, doing probably it. not. They're probably yeah. rejecting one. But, uh, yeah, everybody check out Nettles' uh, the debates. Sorry. Uh, sides again? What's that? I thought you were going to switch sides again there. My, my screen paused for a minute. Well, no, yours is doing this like uh, uh, wonder which wiggly, wiggly, no, wiggly, wiggly worm thing. You all should come to the bait, though. We'd love to have you all. I don't know if it'd be available or not. We'll see. Yeah, I doubt I'll have. With Robin's new job, I doubt I'll have time to do anything. But I appreciate it, though. Uh, nope. Lost it there for a second. Yep, yep. Mm. All right, well, let's wrap it up. Okay, uh, appreciate everybody joining us. Um, sorry, this is only live stream this week. Uh, hopefully next week, um, life doesn't get in the way and we get it uh, knocked out uh, to uh, two book uh, live streams and a theory live stream on hump day. But as a, every Friday, I like to everybody to have a safe and fun weekend. We appreciate every one of y'all and want to see you back here Monday. Um, <clears throat> and Monday's going to be good with the John chapter for sure. So y'all take care, be safe, and thank you all again for joining us. Sorry this is the only live stream this week, but uh love you too. These streams mean more than you know. Oh, thanks, Carl Nettles. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh we love you too. Uh love all of y'all. I mean, without a doubt. I mean, I have a very small uh a window of uh friends and y'all are all in there. Um, yeah, you have a wonderful weekend too. All right. Thanks, James. But uh, short and sweet, y'all take care and see y'all on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye. Good. Bye. Bye, Richard.